Welcome back to the Jester's Court Podcast. On this episode, we take a deep, unbiased dive into the bipolar biography of one of the biggest biotech behemoths of modern times. The bittersweet background of their bewildering, bloated, somewhat backwards, and at times brutal business practices show us the mind-boggling, if not straight mind-blowing bullshit of bogus bureaucracy. Beware of what you might learn as we boldly pull back the big curtain of Bayer AG. You can't handle the truth! You take the blue pill. The story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. If we're going to talk about Star Wars, we might as well invite Darth Vader. Just what do you think you're doing, Dave? We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing. Are you a lizard person? Louis? But we have to pass the bill so that you can uh, find out what is in it. You really are crazy. You take the red pill. You stay in Wonderland. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. That sounded like the Kool-Aid man. <laughs> oh, yeah. Chim chimney, chim chim charo. <laughs> I'm just going to put on a red shirt and go run through a wall. Oh, yeah. Oh, Kool-Aid yeah. Tim. Well, you're not really the Kool-Aid man anymore, dude. You lost a bunch of fart weight. That's true. What's, what's uh, fart weight? I don't <laughs> fucking know. I don't know. You said I it. No, I didn't. I did say it. I was Uh trying to say, I was trying to not say something extremely obscene. So I just said fart weight. We're talking about Nazis and gassing people and giving people AIDS. So why not? Wow. That's, this is dark, dude. Why do we look into this stuff? I don't know. (sighs) I would like to be the blissfully ignorant. We're masochists. We're masochists on a hunt for truth. Masochist. Is that like, some mask you kissed? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's like masks so like, I kissed. Is that, like, is that like when you make out with somebody at a Halloween party? Yeah, exactly. Okay. It's kind of like Just, when you want to like go make out with someone anonymously, and it's called mask. So it's like, a, it's like a glory hole for your face. Exactly. Yeah, it's like a face glory <laughs> hole, so that's why it's called face. the mask I kissed. Got it. Mm-hmm. Okay. So the word of the day <laughs> is mask I kissed. Mask I kissed. Mask I kissed. Interesting. Hey, anyone want to come to my mask kissed party? What? Dude, Sado mask I kissed? Yeah, Sado <laughs> mask I kissed. Yeah. Or this say is, no is mask. Like, Maybe it's say no say mask no I kissed. Say no mask I kissed. Say no mask I kissed. Yeah. This is legit stuff here, people. You <laughs> should be writing this you down. Definitely. We are cunning linguists of the uh, mask kissed arts. We're, we're cutting linguists and master debaters. Yeah, well, the, sure. yeah, the second one for sure. <laughs> uh, oh, man. So Jesus. Uh, it's yeah, really dude. difficult being us sometimes. It's difficult not really. Be- what? I said it's really difficult being us sometimes. I think it's pretty awesome. But it's really not. It's awesome. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's difficult because it's so awesome. Well, I mean, yeah, you know, if it were easy, anyone would do it. Everyone would right? do it. Right, and then, then everybody could be JB and Tim. Yeah, everybody could be. A mask. Throwing against. throwing podcast against a wall to see if it sticks. Yeah, exactly, dude. I mean over the over the interweb super highway. The super web interhighway? Super web interhighway. Exactly. Yeah, I mean we're just, you know we're just throwing shit out there. Seeing what sticks dude. to the wall. Uh, yeah. Hanging we're bantering. Out with microphones and fake plants. Dude, I am I hang out with this microphone. It is like getting all up in my face space, dude. Like, but that's how you have to do it. I think this microphone is a mask I kissed because I feel like Whoa. I'm kissing it as I'm talking. I know. Isn't that weird? It's like, it's like, I hope, I don't really, I hope my microphone is, uh, a dude. I mean, a, a chick. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, um, <laughs> I mean, it's kind of shaped like it's kind of shaped like a testicle. So, was that a Freudian slip? <laughs> I think so. Uh, Where I say one say one thing and mean your mother. 
I'd made me your mother. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. All right. So banter accomplished. I'm sorry if you uh, tuned into this episode and we're hoping to hear more about Bear right off the bat. Um, I'm just sorry that you tuned into this episode, period. <laughs> 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 and hopefully you didn't tune into this episode on your period. But if you did, that's cool. Too. Wow. Wow. Hey, that's uh, that's uh, period shaming, bro. No, no, no! It's celebration. Hiding it. That's Menzies. Me- hiding Menzies it would be like uh, hiding it would be something bad. Oh, the, crim- the, crim- the Crimson yeah. Tide. So, um, yeah, dude. Okay, so a brief synopsis. Uh, <laughs> what do they do? What, what do they? What do they do on the uh, on the on the sitcoms? Like previously on. Previously on. Or what was it like when we last left our hero? Except this. Yeah, when hero. we last left our multinational right. corporation, who is famous for mm-hmm. introducing the world to aspirin, heroin, fentanyl, barbital, uh, they do evil, but they they do a little good. I don't know. Yeah, you so, know. And once Ciplo last and we met. And so yeah, they were. You know, you remember they were founded back in the eighteen hundreds. Uh, they 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 did some horrible things. They created some. Some uh, poisonous gases and chemical weapons. I, some... I created some poisonous gases last <laughs> night, dude. I'm sure you did, dude. Then they became part of a giant conglomerate called IG Farben. Then uh, IG Farben got broken up by the Allied forces during World War II uh, into six, the six companies that formed them. And then that ended up becoming three companies. Bayer was one of them. So, yeah. They did some, uh, you know, they hung out with the Nazis during World War II. It was horrible. Do you, you think uh, Germany, Germany has a, a thing in their constitution that says it's the right to bear arms? Ooh, but um, that was really stupid. Moving on. I said, but um, but I think I'm going to go find a sound effect and actually plug it in. So wah, wah, wah. more specifically, when we left our uh, well, previously on, we were talking about a bunch of different drugs they created. And after the purchase of something called Miles Laboratories and uh, Cutter Laboratories, they uh, acquired a bunch of stuff, Cutter Bug Repellent, one-a-day vitamins, Flintstone vitamins, and Alka-Seltzer. And they also acquired a drug called Factor 8. And I believe that either came along with or led to Factor 9. So this is a blood clotting agent used to treat hemophilia. And if you don't know anything about hemophilia, it's basically... A disease that a lot of people have, I believe. Your your like, your your blood don't quack. Your blood don't clog, so you can bleed out from a paper cut. So I believe it was a mutation that had something to do with malaria. I'm not really sure. This is not an episode about malaria, about hemophilia, so not gonna look it up. So that being said, in the early days so. of the AIDS epidemic. People with hemophilia were found to higher to have found a high, have a higher rate of AIDS than non hemophiliacs. And uh, well, let's let's rewind. Well, Maybe yeah, why did people with hemophilia end up having higher rates of AIDS than people with not with hemophilia? All right, so the alleged story is that this drug factor eight. Hold on, no. Where are we at in the notes here, buddy? We just began page seven. Bayer Consumer Care Management. But that's okay. I can fill. I can fill in the blanks here. So basically, what happened is factor eight is a drug given to hemophiliacs to help their blood coagulate or help them form blood clots so they don't bleed out from minor wounds. So, but that being said, the drug is actually made using donor blood. So at the time. There were some uh, there were some laws in place, at least in the U.S. and probably other countries that called for sterilization of said donated blood that was made or used to make products. And also they were not supposed to use blood donated by prisoners, homosexual males or intravenous drug users. That being said, Bayer ignored these rules and they collected samples from donors that were in all of the above categories and they did not do any of the sterilization techniques using heat to sterilize the blood and kill any diseases that might be there. So what ended up happening is they had this drug that was given to hemophiliacs and they ended up infecting thousands of people who had hemophilia with AIDS. Thank you, JB. Thanks, JB. 
<laughs> so, yeah, fucking horrible. According to the New York Times, this was one of the worst drug-related medical disasters in history. In 1984, they finally came up with new ways to treat bloods. So they finally started actually decontaminating the donor blood and following some of the rules. In 1997, they agreed to pay $660 million in a settlement cases on behalf of more than 6,000 hemophiliacs infected in the U.S. However, in 2003, documents emerged showing that Cutter a subsidiary of Bayer at the time, had continued to sell unheated blood products in markets outside the U.S. until 1985, including Malaysia, Singapore, Indonesia, Japan, and Argentina. To also wait, the- So wait, hold on, hold on. So Cutter was doing medications? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. One of the, one of the things that Cutter, that came with the Cutter so portfolio they was... They did It came with Alka-Seltzer... And- I mean, it was all. It's I don't. It's hard to tell, dude. It was all part of Miles Laboratories. Gotcha. But I mean, at, the, at this time, it was it was already. I mean, after 1978, it was already part of Bayer. So, gotcha. So far after this happened, all the way up until 1985, they were still selling the tainted product that wasn't treated to a bunch of different countries, which is insane. But it's like, oh well, we got all this product, we have to offload. So. In response to being questioned about this, they said, oh, well, some countries were doubtful about the efficacy of the new product. Mm, that sounds a little fishy. Mm-hmm. So I believe the CDC did a uh, did a deep dive and found that I think 74 percent of the people treated with factor eight at in that time frame were uh, HIV positive. Wow. Huh. Three quarters. Huh? Yeah. That's scary shit. And this was being distributed worldwide, but uh, I mean, just the people who stepped forward, there was over six thousand in the in just the U.S. alone. So I mean, we're talking about thousands and thousands of people that they infected with AIDS because they cut corners. And this is legit. This is this is one hundred percent legit. Yeah, we're not speculating. Yeah, we're you know this. We're not like oh you know this actually happened. These are documents that you can go look at. I mean, obviously they paid. Six hundred and sixty million to settle the ca- to settle cases in ninety seven. I mean, like that's yeah, but you noticed, dude, crazy, every dude. single one of these is a settlement out of court, and they and, and and they admit to nothing every single time. Yeah, it's crazy. So it crazy. Moving on from that, in the late nineties, nineteen nineties, they introduced a statin drug called Baycol or Cerevastatin. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, but then after 52 deaths were attributed to it, they continued it in 2001. Side effects was uh, rhabdo or rhabdomyolysis, which is basically you can get it from like overworking your body. Renal failure. Yeah, essentially it's renal failure. Um, but apparently it occurred tenfold greater in frequency in the patients of this bake who's, drug. Who's renal? Renal? Yeah. Sounds like a apparently weird name someone from the who 20s. Fails, who fails a lot. Yeah, hey, it's my uncle Reno. <laughs> this is uncle. He Renal. just failed. He just failed the test. He fails tests all the time. It might be because he he's an his alcoholic. I don't know. Rab- rhabdomyolysis test. Yeah, he he always. Ah, you know what? You know what? Those rhabdomyolysis tests are they're difficult. Oh, I put the emphasis on the wrong syllable. Yeah, Excuse I me. mean, if your name is Renal and you're taking a rhabdo test, you might fail. Whoa. Now, rhabdo doesn't always cause renal failure. If you catch it in time, you can treat it, but. Yeah, but so I mean, like you, you can get you can get rhabdomyolysis from like did I say that right? Uh, yeah, from like running and like not hydrating yourself properly. Correct. Right? Yeah, I mean it's yeah. just it's it's essentially it's just kidney failure. kidney failure. Yeah, but it's not even kidney failure. It's like the first signs of kidney failure. So yeah, if you're overworking the crap out of your body and you're completely you're putting hydrated. a tons of toxins from your from your mm-hmm. it could be a, yeah you could probably get it from drinking too much or whatever I don't know if you, you know get yeah. rhabdo from drinking too much but you can definitely get renal uh, I guess that that would be much. that would be liver yeah 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 um but like rhabdo like if you've ever like if you've ever listened to like David Goggins um or read his book or or any of the above and you've heard the story about the first 100 mile race he ran and how he was like pissing blood and could oh, move. yeah. Like he uh, Eddie, had, Eddie Izzard had rhabdo. He, yeah. Under, Eddie this, under, was, under the same circumstances. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it's pretty frequent among like uh, hardcore athletes who overwork themselves. But um, other than that, it's really not that frequent. But apparently just from this silly drug, you can get it. It um, sounds like a cool like like Norwegian black metal band name. We are rhabdo my license. It's like a death metal band. They just cause. Yeah. They found some we, frequency we of guitar that just makes people's we, kidneys failure. 
<laughs> we will wreak havoc on your kidneys. Yes, we will wreak havoc <laughs> on your kidneys. Yeah. Um, so then uh, after that, they created a drug called Trasolol or Aprotinin. Aprotinin? Apro- Why don't they make these things easier to say? I don't know, man. Used to control this- bleeding during major surgery. It was withdrawn from the market worldwide in 2007 when reports of increased mortality emerged. It was later reintroduced in Europe, but not in the U.S. I like how I like how they say increased mortality as in like <laughs> it's like it's like a positive thing. <laughs> it's like more people died. No, the mortality rate increased. Well, if you think about it, it's like um, it's like being it's like being positive for HIV <laughs> or, or testing positive on a drug test. Yeah, it's like backwards, you know, because like it's not po- it's not a positive thing. It's to not. Test positive well, for... yeah, yeah, that is weird. That, or let's okay, let's go. On. Let's go less, you know, less, uh, less dark. It's like, you know, testing positive for like syphilis. <clears throat> True. Well, I feel like if I had to choose, I'd rather have syphilis than HIV. But anyways. Well, yeah. If HIV actually exists. Well, I mean, it, it obviously does. I'm kidding. You know, whether or not the. uh the way in which it was brought to the world was yeah. how they said it was. So, uh, dun, 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 moving on. Key okay, growth so. products at the time were Zarelto, Ilea, Stevargo. Zarelto is a blood thinner, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Z- Zofigo, Adempis. Uh, so they had Cogate, which is a recombinant clotting factor eight. These all um, sound like Lord of the Rings characters, by right, the way. dude. Or Cogate just sounds like toothpaste, let's be honest. Well, that's like somebody with a speech impediment saying Colgate. Colgate. It's like a little kid. Uh, Zarelto or Riva Roxaban. Ooh, that's like a, that's Riva Roxaban's a kind of a cool like death metal band name too. Riva Roxaban. Yeah, so, we was a Riva Roxaban. So yeah, it was uh, prevention of stroke in people with atrial fibrillation, <laughs> treatment of deep vein thrombosis or DVT and pulmonary embolism and the prevention of DVT in people undergoing surgery. Then they had I'll beta seron, which is an interferon beta 1B an injectable form of a drug used to prevent relapses in the relapsing remittent form of MS. So what's an interferon? Is that just like what it, pretty know. much what it sounds like? It interferons. Like it interferons with beta 1Bs? I don't know. Let's find out. Pre- prevent relapses in <laughs> the <laughs> relapsing <laughs> <laughs> remit. Oh, 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 got it. Okay, it um, makes sense. Had I just paid attention, it would have been. Interferons are a fine. group of signaling proteins that make and release Interferons are a group of signaling proteins made and released by host cells in response to the presence of several viruses. In a typical scenario, a virus-infected cell will release interferons, causing nearby cells to heighten their antiviral defenses. So, so it's, it's a signaling like, cell. It's a signaling cell that it makes your body... Yeah, okay, got yeah. it. Sweet. Rock on. Sweet. Yeah, dude. So, uh, so then after not that... Not to get too was deep into those. Yasmin and Yaz birth control pills. Um... Then we had Nexavor, Nexavor, or Sorafenib, a kinase inhibitor used in the treatment of liver cancer, kidney cancer, and certain types of thyroid cancer. Then we had Trasolol or Aprotinin, which I think we already talked about, inhibitor used control to control bleeding during major surgery. Cipro or Ciprofloxacin, mm-hmm. which is what it is most widely used of the second generation. Queen Alon antibiotics that can came into clinical use in the late 80s and 90s. And Rennie. <laughs> That's like the antacid tablets. Sorry, he's like he's like the runt of the whole thing. It's like, oh, <laughs> what do we have left over? Uh, we have a bunch of uh, sodium bicarbonate. It's Let's call it Rennie. It's just Tums. <laughs> Tums. We'll call it Rennie. <laughs> Pretty much, isn't that isn't that what what antacid like mostly uses the sodium bicarbonate uh-huh. stuff? Yeah, yeah. Um, big in the UK. Yeah. So then uh, after that, it was uh, agriculture. Was their other big kind of? Uh, well, this I think this that we're getting kind of tying into their current situation where they. I mean, I'm not jumping ahead, but when they recently merged with. Uh, no, they had their, they oh. had all this agriculture stuff before that. No, 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 but I'm saying it, oh, made, yeah. the, it made the acquisition uh, m- make more sense, you know, because they've been doing all this stuff. Well, if you look like one of their one of their like main agriculture ag products was um, uh, is it? Oh, Liberty Brands, which they were literally trying to compete with uh, Roundup at the time. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. So, so I mean, that, do you want to go go through some of these? Uh, yeah, in, let's in go through the agricultural agricultural, agricultural products. So they produced uh, fungicides, herbicides, insecticides, and some crop varieties and seeds. So a lot a lot of what the American company Monsanto did. Uh, yeah, yeah. Fungicides primarily marketed for cereal crops, uh, fresh produce, uh, fungal with bacteria based pesticides, and control mildew. And rust disease. That's interesting. Is, I didn't know you could control rust with a fucking fungicide, but hey. I don't know if that's exactly what that is. Um, oh, maybe it's like that red death thing that plants get, not yeah, like the rust that we think of. It's, well, and maybe they call it rust because of the color. Mm-hmm. Who knows? We that could probably sense. look that up, or if you're so inclined. Uh, moving on to the herbicides, primarily for field crops and orchards, Liberty Brands and Basta containing glufosinate. Ooh, general weed control. Uh, that Mufasa is general weed control. Uh, you say Mufasa is general weed control? <laughs> yeah, gl- Mufasa Nate. Oh, so that makes sense. So, that's what, so the Lion King is really all about. Ah. Ha, herbicides, and a bastara containing Mufasa I just can't <laughs> wait to be rust. <laughs> I just can't wait for my fungicides. Um, so Caperno, Caprano is used for grass and broadleaf control, which is another herbicide, apparently. Huh. Uh, incesticides marketed according to... I think to you the mean specific- insecticides. <laughs> no, I'm incesticides <laughs> because oh, I, that, am, that am not, be like I am a, not down for incest. This that is must not be cool. like this a Tennessee is, thing. Yeah, this is when you find <laughs> your brother with your oh, sister. Stop. You, spray, you, you spray it on them. No. This is <laughs> <laughs> it's like bear spray. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, do not have sex with your sibling. <laughs> you, 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 hit, you hit him with a newspaper and you spray, you spray incesticide on him. Oh my God. I'm piss my pants about now, right? Oh. If, we, if we only had a bell, like, so, ding. Um, I know, we need a bell, like, like fucking sofa can. <laughs> you know what we need is the, the, uh, yeah, like the, Douchey Ibiza horn. Um, so, <laughs> insecticides. Thank you, American uh, school systems, for allowing me to fuck that one up. Uh, marketed according. This episode is brought to you by dyslexia. <laughs> I put the sexy in dyslexia. Um, it's mar- marketed according to specific crop and insect pest types. Uh, and then examples of these are Belt, Movento, and Poncho, and Gaucho, which I like, contain... I like Poncho and Gaucho. Are those the ones they like marketed in Mexico? What is this? Like, what is this? A fucking Willie Nelson song? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a Taco Bell commercial. Uh, yeah, right. So I looked up rust, uh, rust diseases in plants. So a little, uh, let me drop some knowledge on you. Or I'm not, mm. but, but planetnatural.com slash pest problem solver slash plant disease slash common rust is going to drop some knowledge on all of us. There are more than 5,000 known species of rust on plants. Common rust, Phragmidium SPP, is a fungal disease that attacks roses, hollyhocks, snapdragons, daylilies, beans, tomatoes, and lawns. It is most often found on mature plants where symptoms appear primarily on the surfaces of the lower levels. I'm sorry, lower leaves. Oh, sweet. So it's Hollyhock. Like a fungal disease, I guess. So, yeah, so uh, getting back these, to the in, so, getting so back to the, the incesticides. Yeah. <laughs> uh, neo neonicotinoids. Neo nicotinoids. Uh, yeah, exactly. Now, I wonder uh, if that's like related to nicotine at all. I mean, it must be. Oh, it could be. Uh, has been linked in a range of studies to adverse ecological effects, including honeybee colony collapse, which doesn't sound like a bad thing. But when you look into if bees, there were no bees. We would pretty much Dude. disappear from the planet. Um, Dude, and, bee colony and collapse there's disorder. A whole, uh, there is a whole Black Mirror episode about little drone bees that they have to like make little, little, little mini like mechanical autonomous drone bees, and then they end up killing people. But the truth of the matter is that sta- at Stanford they are actually developing the exact same thing. I mean, except for the whole Whoa. like murdery stuff. But interesting. Did you ever see that? Did you ever see that episode of Twilight Zone where the dude cut the guy's tongue out, but it didn't die. It just pulsated and gave birth to a bunch of baby tongues. What is that from, dude? <laughs> Wayne's World, bro. Come oh, on. Oh, yeah. Duh. 
We need to be operating at the same professional level here. I'm sorry, man. Um, well, in addition to the bee collapse, uh, the loss of birds due to reduction in insect population. So, Dude. you know, I know we don't effect, like bro. we don't like bees, we don't like insects, but honestly, if we didn't have them, there would not they would not be able to properly germinate and uh, what do they call it when they rub their stamen stuff? Uh, poll- pollinate, duh, hello. Um, pollinate things and we would probably lose a majority of our uh of our food due to that which I, is it i will it, hesitate to kill a bee more so than i would hesitate to kill any other an- animal or insect or totally or a well and and it's funny how this you know the the circle of life um there's certain spiders that you actually want around your house because they kill bugs they kill other exactly. bugs they and then you, there's certain snakes that you want around the around the house because they kill certain spiders. Well, I don't know about around, around your house. house, or maybe around, literally around your house, but not. Yeah, like yeah. Chilling. I'm not saying like I don't have a fuck, fucking snake in my. Like boots, I get up, you I know? get up to, <laughs> I get up to go to the bathroom, but there's like a gopher snake chilling in my fucking. Oh, like, hey, my toilet. what's up like, there, oh, Silas? Hey, Ralph, the, what's going on? You killing gophers Silas today? Silas the snake. He's like, yeah. no, man. No nah, man, the bees are the bee population got killed out, so I don't have any. Uh, I don't have any gophers. I don't have any gophers because <laughs> the whatever. So yeah. So said some countries in the in the EU, the European Union restricted the use of nicotinoids in 2013. Uh, so you know that was only what six years ago. So we're we're still probably not completely out of the woods out of what's uh, what could come of. The effects of mm-hmm. some of these chemicals that were used. Now, ca- kind of, kind of wrapping this up just a little bit because this is like the agricultural side of it. Like I like to think of it in a devil's advocate kind of thing. So their their uh, reasons for doing all this is that they need to pr- or they're tasked with being able to help farmers produce the massive yields that the, the most massive yields that they can. Right. That's kind of the the idea behind making these chemicals so that. To feed the world, basically, in a kind of air quotes, is is that would that be, uh, you know? Yeah, for sure, man. And I, I don't know the details of all of their herbicides and pesticides because they're they're not all bad. I mean, they don't no, no, all no, get for people sure. cancer like fucking glyphosate. But I mean, sorry, allegedly like glyphosate. But yeah, but yeah, I mean, dude, the market calls for something. Someone's going to create it. Exactly. Exactly. And by no means am I justifying their actions. And I'm I mean, just trying to hit this from a very we, even standpoint. You know, we perpetuate here, you know? the, 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 the cycle by, you know, buying by, by buying cheap crops and shit from the grocery store. I'm not saying you shouldn't like do whatever the fuck you want. No, I and mean, yeah, there, there, there's a demand there. But right? if you care so, about that kind of shit, you know, buy organic or or even better, like go to your local fucking farmer's market and buy shit there. Well, and, support, and, and support here's local farms. Here's the here's the rub on this whole thing is that. You know, if you wanted to, you it, most people can have a garden and stuff like that. But like these independent farmers, um, I, I don't know if you guys have seen the movie Food Inc., which we could probably do a whole episode on. But there's stories in there where the you know the men in black, the Monsanto men in black. I'm just kind of equating this to the American version. Um, they go and if you are caught with seeds that aren't Monsanto seeds, you get fined. Um, so that's kind of the 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 dar- the downside to this whole thing. Um, and sort of the nefarious, now, see, that, you know, actions and I stuff like that. I think that's fucking horrible. However, I'm not, I'm not for like making like all this pesticide shit illegal. I think people should have a choice. Like, if you want to buy cheap, shitty crops that might give you cancer, go for it. You know, if you if you'd rather yeah. spend a little bit more money or go to a farmer's market and support your support, I can't, I can't say the word support this morning. What the fuck? So if you want to support your local farmers and go for that too, but I think that we should have a choice. I'm not saying absolutely you shouldn't well, have and to buy Monsanto products and you shouldn't have to buy Bayer products and you shouldn't. Well, you should and make not it easier to buy those products. I mean, make it easier to 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 have the equal choices. Whereas, sure. like you know, sometimes it's harder to find a farmers market or an organic food farm or whatever like that. You should just be able to everybody. Yeah. Really, everybody should be pretty self sustained. Have a garden, be able to you know supplement their diet with yeah, vegetables yeah. and fruits that I they agree. grow themselves. But not everybody has the time. I understand that. So this is kind of I'm just trying to throw the the every man's you know kind of the common narrative at this argument to to kind of see if it holds water sure, and, and all know, this stuff. So it's not we're not we're not trying we're not trying to you know spear these people and and and, well, and but they they do they do some pretty evil shit. Well, and but, also, dude, except for the like a little bit of the very general nicotin nicotinoid. 
issues, which wasn't which was not specific to Bayer's products. None of their I didn't find any nefarious, bad or or disease ridden issues with any of their agricultural products, to be perfectly honest. Um, yeah. That being said, dude, I got to take a piss. You want to uh, jump into I'd like to talk about some of their acquisitions. If you can. Yeah. Find so, those so going I'll, I'll right into. Back. Yeah, no worries. So like any major corporation, uh, they acquire and gobble up the smaller people around them. So in 1994, Bayer purchased Sterling Winthrop's over-the-counter drug business from Smith Klein Beecham, merged it with Miles Laboratories, reclaiming the U.S. and Canadian trademark right to Bayer. So this was at once they, uh, they lost that right. They were able to get that back in 1994. Uh, also reclaiming the Bear Cross, the trademark uh, logo that they had, um, as well as the ownership to Aspirin, uh, the trademark in Canada. Uh, 2004 acquired the over-counter pharmaceutical division of Roche Pharmaceuticals. Uh, March 2008 announced agreement to acquire the over-the-counter, over-the-counter division of Sagmel Inc., which is a U.S.-based company that markets the over the... I say being saying over-the-counter a lot. I'm just going to say OTC. OTC meds in most of the Commonwealth of independent states, countries such as Russia, Ukraine, Kazakhstan, Belarus, and others. So basically, not that they weren't a uh, global global company, but they're getting all this back legally now. Um, August 2008, an explosion occurred at the Bayer Crop Science Factory in West Virginia. A runaway reaction ruptured a tank, and the resulting explosion killed two people. That's pretty tragic. Um, but yeah, but dude, we uh, were alive in 2008, and I didn't even hear about that shit. Exactly. That's yeah. Exactly. And this wasn't Bayer in fucking Germany. This was Bayer in West Virginia. West Virginia, for dude. sure. Um, moving on to the acquisition of Sharing, 2007, Bayer made a white knight bid. I don't know what that means. White so I think knight a white bid. knight bid, because uh, I believe some other company was was making an offer. So let's say, oh, JB, I want like to buy a, your company for 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 ten dollars, and someone else kind of like a sweetheart, and sweetheart deal. Yeah, yeah, okay. Like we're it. gonna save you and offer you so much more money, and then take over all your shit and kill people. Yeah, yeah, like like basically they bid it out because of due diligence, and they knew they were gonna get in anyways. Yeah. Uh, Two thousand seven, Bear made a white knight bid to purchase the sharing AG after an offer was already Sweet made to Merck. AG, dude, I know, dude. I don't know if that's agricultural, if it's uh problem is when you just search ag all you get is like oh it's the it's the freaking uh whatchamacallit uh, uh table what do you dude, call it dude dude table. dude tinfoil hat going on so in it means gold. The da- well yeah well no, i'm sorry yeah. ag is silver a- ag is silver au is gold so that's what i'm saying auag the uh, australia pathogen oh you're right dude dude whoa like the Denver International Airport, you know, that whole thing. Look Whoa. it up. Hashtag look into it. All right. Ha- tinfoil hat off. Um, after, <laughs> uh, let's see here. So the bid was already made to Merck, KGAA, um, and acquired Sharing in 2007, forming Bayer Sharing Pharma. Yeah, so Merck, is- Merck, origi- Merck had the original offer on the table, and Bayer swooped yeah. in, and, and uh, they upped their offer, and then they... they, they t- They're like, sorry, motherfuckers. Yeah. Um, 2010, Bayer bought Auckland-based animal health company Bomac Group. Well, now um, we're in your wheelhouse, dude. We're talking about veterinary sciences. Yeah, totally. They partnered on the development of the radiotherapeutic Zofigo with Algeta, and in 2014 moved to acquire the company. Also in 2014, agreed to buy Merck's consumer health business, Claritin, Coppertone, and Dr. Schultz, giving Bayer second place globally in non-prescription drugs. I wonder Dang. who the first place is or was at the time. Uh, I would venture a guess in saying, like, uh, uh, who does, like, Johnson & Johnson, maybe? Yeah, it's probably J&J, dude. Um, 2015. Sold diabetic care business to Panasonic Healthcare Holdings. So you can go buy a VCR and diabetic care. Because Panasonic makes a lot of like the electrical components and stuff. So that makes sense because 
No, their, I know. Their diabetes unit, uh, it was like um, blood glucose monitors and stuff like that. It was more like uh, med devices more than drugs. Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. And at this point in time, I don't believe they own nowadays. They don't own any more device type shit. They don't? Yeah. No, pa- Panasonic don't. Not doesn't? Not that I know of. I have no idea. Gotcha. So let's see We can see only here. dive so deep into this in a, in a two or three part episode. For sure. Uh, quickly moving in because the, the uh, piece de resistance in the acquisitions department is coming shortly. 2015, Bayer spun out of its material science division into separate publicly traded companies called Covestro, but retained 70% interest due to their relatively low profit margins. They do this a few times, man. They're like, oh, we're going to... We're going to sell this business unit off, but then they don't really sell it off because they still maintain like a majority so shareholdings of it's, it. So, yeah, it's it's kind of like cutting the fat so that you get the the yield from the steak, but uh-huh. you still keep the fat for seasoning. Right. Um, yeah. This, it's, I mean, I'm, again, I'm sure this is done a lot oh, in yeah, yeah, uh, major, major multi, multinational corporations and for stuff sure. like that. Uh, following the spinoff, Bayer rebranded itself as a life science company. Uh, it sounds like a like an intro class in high school. Like, hi, we're Bear. We're going to teach you life sciences. Right. <laughs> um, restructured into three divisions and one business unit: pharma, consumer health, crop sciences, and animal health. Interesting. Which brings us to JB's the favorite 2016. Actually, do you want to take well, this or do you? Yeah, wanna, yeah I'll take know. this one. So it yeah. started in 2016. Uh, they Bayer offered to buy the U.S. Seeds Company, a little company you may have heard of. Um, oh, the creators of a little thing called Agent Orange among and glyphosate uh, and, and Roundup. Well, that's glyphosate. Yeah, I know. Just people, glyphosate. people may not know what. Sorry, is in so Roundup. Yeah, they created Agent Orange and Roundup. So basically, Bayer came in 2016. They made him an offer for 62 million. Monsanto was like, "Fuck you, we want more money." So finally, two years later, in 2018, so just just a, uh, less than a year ago, actually, as we record this, um, they finally closed a deal for 66 billion dollars. Billion um, with a B. That is a lot of at zeros. The, at the moment the close happened, the Monsanto brand, which does uh, it, it's funny because I feel like Bayer has more atrocities than Monsanto, but Monsanto has maybe just not been as good at uh, maintaining. The, or been a or been a company as long they they uh, they've been a company not quite as long but they've been a company for a long time well Maybe, Monsanto's been Monsanto's been ba- ma- mainly in the chemical market they didn't they haven't really dabbled in uh maybe they have I don't think I don't think they've dabbled in like uh Medicines and stuff like that. No, 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 not at all. They're chemicals and uh, chemicals and chemicals and seeds. seeds. Yeah, yeah. It's it's so, it's so they're they're mostly agricultural. Yeah. Right, right, right. And 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 it's I guess. Well, I don't know. It's 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 amazing they didn't catch more shit for the Agent Orange thing, but I guess they had. It was the government that like contracted them to do that, so that's not really. I mean, it is their fault. It does. It so. doesn't really surprise me. Yeah. No. So, anyways, Monsanto brand was immediately discontinued. Uh, at the time, its name was not. I wouldn't say it was. It was AU. It was more AG, if even that. It was more like tin. But um, <laughs> hopefully, you guys got that joke. If not, rewind like ten minutes and re-listen to that. Uh, its products are now marketed under the name the Bayer name. So the corporate structure. Um, so that's 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 the acquisitions. So now we're getting into some some technical stuff. We'll try to just run through this. But for those of you who are interested in kind of all the shit, then at least you get to know it. In two thousand three, Bayer reorganized into a holding company. So the core businesses were transformed into limited companies, each controlled by Bayer AG. Those companies were Bayer Crop Sciences AG, Bayer Healthcare AG. Bayer Material Science AG and Bayer Chemicals AG, and then they maintain three service limited companies. So companies that create that provide services, not products. So basically, this Bayer turns into one of those companies that you see commercials for that you have no idea what they do because they do everything. Well, I mean, it's it's similar to you know fucking. I mean, you know what Disney does, but you don't. Know it's like all the well, it's Disney like it's owns. like three. It's like three M. You know, exactly. okay, yeah, they made Velcro, but Which they make a lot of other shit. We, you know, we like make the fucking uh, post-it notes. But yeah, then, we make the fuzzy grace or fuzzy orange stuff on tennis balls. But 3M you is know? also one of the, and they make sandpaper. But then they're one of the biggest. They're one of the biggest uh, companies in the medical device space. Period. My you know? my point my point exactly yeah. is that Bear is like okay, they're just growing, 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 consuming, yeah. consuming, consuming, and and then. 
you know, it's like the mothership in, mm-hmm. uh, in what's it called, Independence Day, shooting out all oh, these little sure, baby ships so now well, they can pretty much it. cover the entire globe. Think about it, like Time Warner Spectrum, like AT&T, all these kind of, like uh, Qualcomm, fucking uh, Motorola. Or an- all an- these Anheuser-Busch owning all of the, uh, you yeah. know, the little micro brews and stuff. Yeah, so I, like, I'm, uh, I'm not, I'm not the, saying it's evil, it's just business. What's the tobacco you know? company? Uh, Philip Morris. Oh, Philip Morris. Yeah. Doesn't Philip Morris owns Kraft and all sorts of other fucking companies? Like, dude. I think so. Yeah. yeah. So in 2016, um, after their spinoff of Covestro and getting rid of their materials division, they began a second restructuring. Uh, and, and at this point, their aim was to to allow a transition into that kind of like JB said, changing, rebranding themselves as a life sciences based company. So, um, so that's kind of that. So the first, their first in this new rebranding. Bayer Crop Sciences was kind of the first, um, their first, whatchamacallit, division. Uh, yeah. So it has, as JB was mentioning earlier, crop protection is kind of their thing. Uh, non-agricultural pest control, so pesticides, fungicides, blah, blah, blah. They are involved in genetically engineering of food or a, th- a little term you might have heard called GMO. GMO. Mm, delicious. I However you feel about that or not, it's GMO uh, they're, they're, is a, they're doing it. There's a gray. In my opinion, GMO has gray. It's not black and white. No, no, um, for sure. So if I you were to if you were to splice together your two favorite fruit trees, that's ten, that's technically a genetically modified organism. Dude, every fucking dog breed that exists is technically a genetically uh, well. Genetically I'm not. E- I'm organism. not eating dogs, but uh, well, you're not in the right country. <laughs> could be. But my my point is, I mean, there's there's animals that are mod- genetically modified. Plants are gen- genetically modified. Now there's different types of genetic modification, and I think what people immediately think of is more like CRISPR type shit, where they're like, you know modifying things via chemicals and, and hormones and, and actual like weird sort of mad scientist shit. But you know, every dog breed, lots of plant breeds shit. If you well, fucking smoke weed, almost all of your weed is all some sort of hybridized GMO version of something and, uh, else. The, the main, the main reason, the main thing behind uh, genetically modified in this sort of realm is so like, for instance, these uh, fungicides, herbicides, they go down and kill, Pretty much everything that's under the ground. So they don't want to kill the seeds. So basically, these right. companies like Bayer and Monsanto design seeds that can withstand the fungicides and herbicides and insecticides. So that's that's their. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, they obviously do more of more well, different things, but I think that's the majority of what they do is they're trying to design seeds that will grow through the poison. Pretty no, much, for sure. Dude. They have <laughs> like they have glyphosate resistant seeds. But then yeah. the other thing too is I think they they also try to modify things to produce higher yields. Absolutely, um, yeah, bigger, bigger, yeah, faster, bigger, stronger, bigger, faster, stronger. And then they've they've actually done some things that are good. I mean, there is um, I was I was watching something and there's some population of people in somewhere in like rural Southeast Asia that have a they have a huge vitamin A deficiency in their diet uh, because they eat mostly rice and probably some fish, but not probably not a lot. And um. And they they have a an, an incredibly high rate of blindness. So some company I don't I don't remember this was, this was a while ago. I'm I'm pulling this all from memory. So I'd like to cite my source, but I don't remember. So um, I'm just trying to do my best here. But they some company created a a version genetically modified version of rice um, that had uh, that was basically chock full of vitamin A, and huh. it actually was something that helped this 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 community of people. So. Yeah, well, and 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 like drought resistant crops, uh, they're engineered more to grow yeah. to be able to most more like, efficiently uh, use the like water that's at hand. That's cactus. It's well, that, I'm just saying, and you can make tequila that's with it. <laughs> genetically modified. You know, if you're doing, if you're yeah. creating seeds that can and uh, will survive through less water, that's a that's a good version of a genetically modified. Dude, organ, I think, you know, I think genetic modification is just like anything. I, I think maybe at at, at, at its onset. The the intentions are true and they want to do good things, but then people get fucking greedy and they're like, well, how can we make a bigger fucking tomato? How can we make a bigger exactly, steer? How can exactly. we make more steer? How can we make a bigger steer that we don't have to feed as much? How do we make a bigger fucking flower? Yeah, I mean, it is what it is, uh, but we're not. that's not really the point of this episode. So I digress. Um, so in 2002, they acquired Adventus, which is now part of Sanofi, but they only... They only acquired their crop science version or uh, department. They fused it with their own agrochem division, and that made Bayer Flans and Shoots or Crop Protection to form Bayer Crop Sciences later on. 
uh, Belgian biotech company Plant Genetic Systems joined the party through the Aventus acquisition. Also in 2002, they acquired a Dutch seed company named Noonhems. Noonhems. Five largest seed companies. If you look in the last 15 years, the world's seed companies have been reduced to, I think, three. I think there's only three yeah, companies that it's, own like ninety percent of the world's seeds, which kind of like our scary. our media companies, you know. I mean, yeah, but we don't need media. We do need. Well, seeds I, I, when I'm just kind of making drawing the, the uh, you know, the comparison of major corporations acquiring no, sure. and 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 doing that. So for sure, but uh, then they're really good at creating all these little little fucking uh, satellite companies that they don't technically own, but they do. So no, I know, uh, and that's so and that's where the that's where it models. kind of. It skirts the, 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 what do you call it? Uh, uh, whatever. I have no idea what I'm trying to say. Keep moving. Uh, so then in, in, in 06, the U.S. Department of Agriculture announced that Bayer Crop Sciences Liberty Link genetically modified rice, which is not the rice I was speaking of uh, recently, had contaminated the U.S. rice supply shortly after the EU banned imports of U.S. long grain rice and their futures plunged. Um, Man, that's scary because I, I heard nothing about this either. Probably wasn't I, paying dude, attention, was only, but this was like five years, years ago. ago. Wait, oh. did you say 2014? No, I no. said 20, 2006. Oh, okay, um, got it. In 2010, Lenoke or Lonoke County, Arkansas, I don't know how to pronounce that, uh, awarded a dozen farmers $48 million in, in uh, the case, and the case is currently on appeal in the Arkansas Supreme Court. In 2011, Bayer agreed to global settlements for up to $750 million for this rice shit. And in 2014, they announced a plan to invest $1 billion in the U.S., mostly to expand the production of its herbicide Liberty, an alternative to Monsanto's Roundup, which is funny because yeah, fast forward four years and now they own Roundup. They, so. they invested $66 billion yeah. <laughs> and just so bought that $1 them billion dollars was kind of a joke. Um, yeah. I think I went too far here. So yeah, in tw- uh, I said in 2016, Bayer Crop Sciences became one of the three major divisions of Bayer AG, reporting directly to the head of the division, Liam Condon. So the next one would be Bayer Consumer Health. JB, do you want to jump down this rabbit hole? Sure. Uh, let's see here. Well, in the 2000- in 2016, that's when the uh, restructuring took place. Uh, Bayer Healthcare comprised of further four subdivisions, Bayer Sharing Pharma, Bayer Consumer Care, Bayer Animal Health, and Bayer Medical Care. Uh, Animal Health was moved into its own business unit, leaving the division with the following categories. Jesus, this is just like dividing and dividing and dividing. I need to draw uh, a flow chart and put it in the fucking show notes, dude. I know, dude. Well, it's really hard to follow. Like, I'm just feeling like I'm just reading all this stuff, but it's like you well, look at it and it's like, purpose. holy fuck. I know. And so they can move it's, well, around all their fucking shit. And- you know what it is? It's roots, dude. It's like you're, they're putting down roots here. This is like if you look at it sideways, all these little tentacles are like little roots that go well, deeper in the ground. It's half that, and I think it's half of a shell game. For sure. Because sure. it's like, oh, Oh, that product killed a bunch of people. Well, that's that's part of our other. That's a part of a different company. Bayer something well, something is a different company. And it, and it makes sense because so for instance, the animal uh, uh, la, 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 the following categories: uh, allergy, analgesics, which are like painkillers, cardiovascular mm-hmm. risk prevention, cough and cold, dermatology, foot care, gastronomical, gastrointestinal, excuse me, nutritional. What's a gastronomical, <laughs> JV? I have no idea. Um, and sun care. So this is all, the, you know, you, if you're going to put out these products, you're probably going to want specialized divisions, which is all, which are what all these are. Well, and it's probably a good thing, too, because then if they if one of the divisions have uh, or one of the co- companies has a product that, you know, goes bad or whatever, other the other divisions or companies might have good products and like, you well, know, they're I, shielded. Yeah, exactly. And that's, it's, it's, it's probably a bad thing on some fronts and it's probably a good thing on other fronts because, you know, maybe their animal products are great, but. You know, they make some other product in their pharma division that kills people. Like, I wouldn't necessarily want, you know, people to suffer or animals. To yeah, suffer you wouldn't you wouldn't want a product shit. that you're actually using that's good taken off the shelf because some other dipshit in the other part of the company did something evil. Right. Yeah. Like I mean, just because just Kraft the, macaroni and cheese will kill you doesn't mean I want to stop smoking cigarettes. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Bear Consumer Healthcare manages all of its over-the-counter portfolio, so all mm-hmm. the aspirins, all that stuff. Uh, key products include analgesics, again, aspirin and Aleve, food supplements, Redoxin and Baraka. Oh, dude, I tried Baraka. What is it? 
It's like a it's like a fizzy thing that you put in. It's got like caffeine. It's supposed to make you focus. Um, I I've joke and call it, it dude. Bar- Baraka Obama. Barack um, Obama. I th- I think it's big. Uh, it's obviously big in uh, in Europe. Um, ah. But uh, you can get it at Walgreens. Um, it's in like one of those tubes that uh, Airborne comes in, like oh, a little yeah. plastic tube. And then um, is it like a little tablet, like Airborne? Yeah, it's it's an effervescent tablet, and it's oh. just it just it's full of caffeine, and I think it's just mostly caffeine and some vitamins that I'm make gonna go you try one, see if it make you me. quote unquote focus. Um, like another key products are skincare products like Bethanem, Bethanthem, and Bapanthal, which I have no I'm idea. I'm wondering what if those, those are. are ingredients that they put in, uh, like like um, oh, probably lotions and, and lotions, yeah. Yeah. oh, could be, yeah. Uh, yeah, so I'm wondering healthcare. if they maybe don't produce the 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 end consumer product on in that kind of uh, realm. If it's more, they produce some of the. Well, it would make sense because they're a chemical company. Yeah, you so know, they I mean, some of the ingredients that maybe like. Well, you know that, that I mean, they that, own, that they active own ingredients. Tone. Yeah, so why you know they huh. may as well they build they build a company around these other products. Yeah. Um, women's healthcare is an example of a general medicine business unit. Uh, other key products include the cancer drug Nexavar. The MS drug Betafron, wait, beta ferron. Yeah, beta ferron, uh, I think. Beta ser, beta seron, and the blood clotting drug cogenate. Co- co- cogenate? cogenate? Cogenate. I don't know. Who knows? Uh, again, uh, insert random Lord of the Rings character name here. There you go. Uh, 2014 asked that Bear would buy Merck Co.'s consumer healthcare unit. So that's a big one, too. Because well, they it's were funny, the ones that you were. Remember, uh, just before that, they 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 fucking cock blocked Merck on their shearing acquisition. Yeah, and they exactly. Went and bought, you know, and they just went and bought Merck. This is like the incredible spending expanding blob here. It's like you know how do you? Well, it's just, the pro- it's just I think the problem with this is too is like how do you control this? You know how do you you know get to the point where if they want to do something they can they just buy the people who are well, doing dude, it. Dude, and know? then like and their their tentacles are so broad. I mean, and you know they also control they control Daihan Pharmaceuticals. Which is uh, it's in China, and I think they make like all of the fucking they they make a bunch of the the generic drugs that you see marketed as like Target brand or fucking oh, Walmart. Oh yeah, Walmart yeah, brand. for sure. Um, so Bayer Pharmaceuticals, I guess we'll jump into that. They focus on prescription products, especially women's health and cardiology. So, um, as well as specialty therapeutics in areas of oncology, hematology, and ophthalmology. So that's uh, cancer medications, blood medications, and eye medications. The, the division also comprises the radiology business unit, which markets contracts, contrast enhanced diagnostic imaging equipment. That's really fancy for like you drink that shit when you have to go do like take get an X-ray or take an MRI or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just med- medical so imaging all of stuff. The contrast enhanced diagnostic shit. So in addition to internal R&D, they have participated in public and private public slash private partnerships. Two examples, which mean nothing to me because I'm not sure how to de how to fucking translate this, but InnoMed Pred Talks program, which was a non-clinical safety assessment and innovative medicines initiative of EFPIA and the European Commission. So basically they just, they have participated in basically the government was like, hey, we need a partner to do this fucking study of some shit. And I don't, I didn't really look into it. So. Well, and it, and it seems as like, you know, they go and partner with somebody and then ultimately they end up buying the company. So, well, yeah. Yeah, except they they don't directly buy the government. They just non-directly buy the government. Bayer Animal Health, so they are the makers of some products you may have heard of. Advantage Multi-Topical Solution for Dogs and Cats, Advantage Flea Control for Dogs and Cats, and Canine Advantix, a flea, tick, and mosquito control product for dogs. They specialize in parasite control and prescription pharmaceuticals for dogs, cats, horses, and cattle. Bayer Business Services. Wow, they just they're in everything. Well, I think their business services, they probably work with other companies too, but I think their business services unit is primarily to handle all the IT and infrastructure bullshit for the rest of the Well, companies. I know, but that's like, that's like you know, it's like Amazon creating their own shipping, you know? That's I mean, actually, it's, well, they, they kind of have. I know they have. That's, that's what I'm crazy. saying is that you have, you, your, your company's so big that you need to have your own IT, but it makes sense. I'm not saying, I'm not, no, I'm not saying really it doesn't like- make sense. I don't really like having to transport our products on these roads. Let's build a road building company and just build right. our own fucking roads. Exactly. Yeah. It's yeah, in the sky with drones. Dude, um fuck that. Well then they have so, some Amazon thing where they want to like somehow make it so they can like drop off packages in the trunk of your car. The, uh, yeah, no. Fuck that. 
Anyways, this is. Oh yeah, just come on, come on in my house. Here's the keys. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> you, you need not- a bear. There's one in the fridge. <laughs> so so uh, yeah, you see, so you were talking about bear business services, huh, JB? <laughs> um. So kind of skipping over the rest of bear business services because it's not that important. Um, they're basically the talk- IT department. Yeah, let's talk about some of the things that have that are no longer uh, part of mm. the bear business units. Uh, Bayer Chemical AG was combined with certain components of their polymer segment to form the new company, Lanxess, in 2004. So I wouldn't say defunct. I would just say they don't use that name anymore. <laughs> it's more like defunct company names. Pretty much, yeah. Like, like business diag- unit names. Their diagnostics division was uh, acquired by Siemens <laughs> Medical <laughs> Solution in 2007. Um, oh, Siemens. Well, Siemens is another big company. They make cell phones. They make everything, you know. Uh, the diabetes unit, the Wilford Brimley unit, uh, managed their med device portfolio, sold to Panasonic. We, we already went over that, mm-hmm. yeah, for sure. Uh, Bayer Material Sciences created high-tech polymers, developed solutions for broad range of applications relevant to everyday life, turned into a separate company called Covestry, which I think we it's already It's actually Covestro. Too. We already talked about that. Oh, well. Sorry, I, 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 I misspelled that. All good. Just say so, it again, say Covestro. Turned into the separate company Covestro, which was then spun out in 2015. Oh, so, yeah. so basically, there's not a lot of failure there. They just stopped using names no, for certain yeah, things. No, yeah, they didn't. They don't really have a whole lot of failures at all. Um, I'm going to run through their finances real quick because it's not that inter- interesting, but it is kind of interesting just because of the fucking billions and billions of dollars that go through this company. In 2017, they reported an earnings of 7.3 billion euros. Uh, I don't know what that is in dollars, but I'm guessing it's over 10 billion in dollars with an annual revenue of 35 billion euros, uh, which was an increase of 25% over previous fiscal cycle currently, or I guess in 2017, their market cap is valued at a U.S. uh, $65.4 billion. Oh, that was late, late 2018. So that was less than a year ago. One euro equals 1.11 United States dollar as of, as of August 15th. So the euro's gone down or the dollar's gone up. I don't know which one. Um, So yeah, so, so uh, basically we'll say it's currently market cap at uh, a little over $65 billion. Um, So then uh, there's Bayer 04 Leverkusen. In 1904, the company founded a sports club because, hey, why not? Let's have a sports club. Uh, They called it SUS 04. By 1984, it was known simply as Bayer 04 Leverkusen. I don't know what the 04 stands for. but Oh, no, I guess it was founded in 1904, so that makes sense. Uh, Best known for their football team, which I'm guessing is a soccer team since I live in yeah. America. Oh, yeah, yeah, they yeah. Also invo- they're also involved in many sports, including fencing, team handball, volleyball, boxing, and basketball. Sweet. Um, apparently, it is one of the largest sports clubs in Germany. So, um, yeah, pretty interesting. Oh, wow. So, the way, uh, we're getting to the, I think we're getting to the end of this. I think we may have to do this a three-parter because there's still quite a bit of information we need to cover. Um, but well, let's kind cover, of nip, nip, let's cover nipping this awards. one in the bud, the awards and recognition, and then let's save the litigation and the atrocities for episode. Yeah, three. the good, the good stuff. That's Leave the them wanting more. Um, episode one was pretty pretty riddled with with shit. Episode two was, I feel like, maybe just educational. And this is actually, three, I keep I keep bringing up the Lord of the Rings. This is a lot very reminiscent of the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Whereas the first one's good, the second one's like, eh, and then the third one's good. So yeah, it's kind of like Mario Brothers. You know, the first one was good, the second one's like, what the fuck, and then the third one. Well, like, we didn't we didn't have any character development to do in this one. So no, it's true. Uh, it was just basically information. Well, no, this was the character development episode. This is like where we kind of talked about, you know, it wasn't all bad. They, you know, they weren't buying. Oh, okay, fucking, yeah. They weren't buying Jew slaves. They weren't fucking killing wow. people necessarily. Wow. Well, I mean, yeah. I guess, I guess we started off with the whole AIDS thing. So yeah, I guess maybe it wasn't all good. <laughs> Fuck it. All right. So awards and recognition. 2008 Canadian division named one of Canada's top 100 employers by Medigroup, Media Group, Canada Inc. So, hey, they're getting awards. Canadian division named one of the greatest Toronto's top employers by the Toronto Star newspaper. Bayer USA gives a score of... Give... What? Bayer USA has a score of 85 to 100. 85 to 100 than human rights come... Wow. I think... Okay. Chop this up. Let me... Let me... uh, So... So... uh, (laughs) I think I I I wrote this wrong. 
I think you did too. I want to say like Bayer got a score stuff. of 85 out of 100 in the yeah. human right campaign's 2011 Corporate Equality Index, a measure in of gay myth. and lesbian workplace equality. It's like everything that they've, every accolade they've gotten though has been They've like, given themselves. Well, not, I mean, but even, but even aside from that, it's all about like equality in the workplace, which is a good thing. Don't get me wrong, but it's like, eh, well, I guess they did get a few Nobel prizes back in the day. Yeah, but recently? For how long they've been around, though, not that impressive on the whole awards. And uh... Yeah, so in 2016, yeah. Standards, Standard Ethics AEI gave Bayer a fourth tier in an eight-tier ranking to include the company in its Standard Ethics German Index. That does not sound like an award or an accolade. No, but it that was just sounds like accolades, uh, the accolades here. thing on the Bayer website and on their Wikipedia <laughs> page, so... You guys get this. It's like you guys are right in the middle. You guys Congratulations. Are just, just, you guys are just so average. Here's a fucking award. You, you know what? Here's you, a participation you guys, trophy. Your, your guys' application went through to be a part of this index. Here you go. You Congrats. know what? You spelled your name right on the SAT. So exactly. Here's your score. You get 600. You get, yeah. Um, so, yeah, not that impressive, Bear. Yeah, why don't you fucking step your game up, bitches? <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, not that impressive, uh, to be perfectly honest. Um, but yeah, so that is where we're going to leave this for now. Uh, this will be a three parter. So thank you all for listening to episode two of bear AG, bear, um, bear, 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 fun times. <laughs> so next uh, week, uh, we will get into, we get into the dark and stormy some of dude. the litigation, it's, it's, some uh, of the dark yeah. and storminess, and then. I believe we will round the episode out with uh, a full uh, redux of all of the atrocities committed by Bayer. Yeah, bookending it with their evilness. Yes. <laughs> so, that being said, uh, thank you go for out there, listening. Try and enjoy the sunny, sunny skies because yeah, the clouds are coming for you. Boom on the horizon, the four horsemen lurk of the bear apocalypse. Calm before the storm. Calm That's before right. the bear storm. Bear Stearns. Bear, Wait, wrong bear. Bear, bear AG apocalypse. Yep. Okay. I'm gonna it is weird. They have four business units and there's four horsemen. Whoa. Yeah. What is it? Pestilence, pestilence, death, war, and. Incesticides. Incesticides. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. I just, We're going to leave I, you I guys just, with that. I could just see the commercial. Is your, is your brother up and your sister? <laughs> Take this drug. <laughs> <laughs> Comes in a new spray bottle uh, with, a, with the accompanying newspaper. All right. Yeah, all right. And on that note, we leave you. Peace Be out good. until we speak again. <laughs>